good student. My my name is John Miola, Community Jana, tutor for today's lesson titled Accounting for Joint Joint Venture. I welcome you to today's class and I hope you are ready. Promises to be a fascinating one. So if you are ready, then the tutor is, is much more ready. So let's get started. So structure of the lesson. Number one. We have to look at what joint arrangement means. That's the first thing we have to do. I think I have to say this very, very uh, response. That although the title of the lesson is Accounting for Joint Venture, but joint venture within the um, provisions of IFRS 11 is a subset of joint arrangement. And therefore, we cannot look at joint venture without making reference to IFRS 11. And that is why we also have to discuss joint arrangement. And what it means, we move on from there to establishing and defining joint control. Joint control is a concept that is very central to joint arrangement. Without joint control, there cannot be joint arrangement. Our point must be made. So, joint arrangement has two types, joint operation and joint venture. We'll fully look at what, I mean, what it means then other matters that are worthy of consideration in trying to identify a joint operation and differentiate same from joint venture will also be you know, looked at. Then how do we identify a joint operation and a joint venture? Uh, the financial statements. So the financial arrangement of parties involved in a joint arrangement that is both under joint operation and joint venture. And provide the synopsis of today's lesson and concludes it. So let's get started. What is a joint arrangement? A joint arrangement is a mechanism arranging or arranging two or more parties in whom have invested joint control. In whom have invested joint control. Establish a venture, establish an outlet, establish an entity, establish a financial structure with the aim of accomplishing certain things. And this arrangement must have two key characteristics. And what are they? Number one, they must be bound by the terms and condition of the contract. That is, there must be a contract in place. And number two, the terms and conditions of this contract must be binding on these parties. And the second one, there must be joint control. There must be joint control. If the arrangement, if the contractual arrangement that binds this party does not give them joint control, then it's not a joint arrangement. There can be something else, but not joint arrangement. It can be subsidiary, it can be associate, it can be even an investment that it may probably be required to treat in accordance with IFRS 9, financial instrument. It can be anything. Then, it's either they are classified as joint operation or they are joint venture. This joint arrangement is of two types. Joint operation, it's either it's joint operation or joint, joint venture. So, what, let's now quickly look at joint control. What is joint control? A joint control is contractually aggregation of control of an arrangement, of a mechanism, of a system that have brought these parties together. And it operates in such a way that no decision can be made without seeking and obtaining unanimously the consent of the parties involved. All the parties involved must come together and take that decision. Even if I have 5%, that 5% must get me involved in making decision. I can't just go ahead and take decision. So, Let's look at some scenarios. Let's take some questions to illustrate whether joint control exists in a scenario or not. Number one question is, does the contractual arrangement give all the parties, or group of parties, control? If there is no control, collective control, then that, there can never be joint control. And once there is no joint control, there can't be joint arrangement. Then, if your answer here is yes, you are moving towards joint control. If no, are moving towards something outside the scope of IFRS 11. Do decisions about the relevant activities 
require the unanimous consent of parties involved collectively. If your answer is yes, we are moving towards joint control. But if no, something outside the scope of joint control. As you see, if your answer is no, outside the scope of IFRS 11, or if yes, definitely there is joint control. So it is when there is joint control that we can have joint arrangement. So move on to joint operation. What is joint operation? How is it different from joint venture? A joint operation is a type of joint arrangement whereby parties involved in that arrangement have joint control. And separately, these parties have rights to their assets and obligations for the liabilities of that arrangement. So, A, B, C coming together, they both have rights to their assets and obligations for the liabilities. If there are expenses, each party is involved or the parties involved, they will have obligations for the expenses. If there are incomes, they have their um, rights to the income separately. So, that is joint operation. Then, what is a joint venture? It's a form of arrangement whereby the parties that have joint control, the parties that have joint control, joint control of the arrangement also have rights to the net assets. So, if you make an attempt to compare and contrast joint venture with joint operation, we'll find that, that remarkably, joint venture requires that the parties involved that have joint control have rights only to net assets. Not assets separately, liability separately. It's net assets. But for joint operation, you have separate rights to assets and obligations for lab separately. So in trying to establish this, you must also make decisions. You must exercise judgment on whether there is a central, there is a separate vehicle with which the arrangement is being carried out or not. When we say vehicle, we don't mean Toyota, we don't mean Camino, we mean an entity on its own. A separate vehicle can be an entity on its own, can be a financial structure, can be an, a financial arrangement. So a financial arrangement that will have its own asset, that will have its own liabilities, that will have its own incomes and expenses, not joint asset from any of the parties involved in the joint arrangement. And in trying to establish this, a lot of judgment you know, will have to be exercised. So now, how do we go about this? In trying to establish this, you have to consider you know, some matters. Number one is the legal form. If the legal form says that indeed the separate vehicle is separate, then it becomes a separate vehicle. And if it's a separate vehicle, what that means is the joint arrangement will turn more towards a joint venture. But if there is no separate vehicle, then the joint arrangement will be a joint operation. It'll be a joint operation. So, again, the terms and conditions involved in the contract also makes it clear that it is indeed a separate vehicle. So, if it's a separate, if it's a separate vehicle, then it means that. The joint arrangement is a joint venture. But if it's not a separate vehicle, then it becomes a joint operation. And lastly, there may be some other relevant facts and circumstances that you may have to consider. Let me throw a bit of more light um, on, on these issues. When you are trying to identify whether a joint arrangement is a joint operation or is a joint venture, you must consider whether there is a separate vehicle first. If there is a separate vehicle, you are moving more towards joint venture. But once there is no separate vehicle, you are moving more towards joint operation. Now, even if there is a separate vehicle, you don't definitively conclude that the joint arrangement is a joint venture because you have to consider three factors. And the factors are what you see. Number one is the legal form. Number two is the terms and condition of the contract. And number three, all that relevant facts and circumstances. So you must consider them. So if you consider them and the answers you get from them is such that, you know, 
the intent towards making that vehicle a separate one, then you will have a joint venture. But if not, you can have a separate vehicle that will, end, that will still end up being a joint operation. So the issue of separate vehicle must first of all be identified before you now say, okay, is this a, separate, is this a joint operation or is this a joint, joint venture? I hope you're following. So then let's look at this. Let's look at this image. This child helps us address that question very well. Number one, you have to identify all joint arrangement first. Is the arrangement structured through a separate vehicle? Is it structured through a separate vehicle? I said it earlier, you will recall that we said the first thing up, your first question to answer is is that arrangement a separate vehicle or is it not a separate vehicle? If yes, you are tending more towards a joint venture. If no, then you are tending more towards a joint operation. Then you answer subsequent questions. Does the legal form of the vehicle give the investors, the parties involved, right to assets and obligations for liabilities? If yes, then you are moving towards joint operation. But if no, then you are moving towards what? Joint venture. Now, do the terms and conditions of the contract invest in those parties the rights to assets and obligations for the liabilities? If yes, it becomes a joint arrangement and um, joint operation. If no, you're tending more towards joint venture. And the third factor, other factors and circumstances that are pertinent. So if other factors are if these factors and circumstances, you know, are such that they vest in the parties right to assets separately and obligations for the liabilities of the joint arrangement separately then it becomes a joint operation. But if no, it becomes a joint venture. So please, you may want to look at this over and over to be very, very, very sure. So now let's illustrate. Let's look at an example. A, B, C, and C, D structure a joint arrangement in an incorporated entity X, Y, Z. They each have a 50% ownership interest. Now you're thinking of something. Can you see? ABC is a party, CDE is another party, and they decided to establish a separate entity called XYZ. Oh, this is tending more towards joint venture, isn't it? But I told you earlier, I don't rush into conclusion. I have to consider three things. Number one, the legal form. Number two, terms and conditions. Then number three, all the relevant facts and circumstances. So, let's continue. Each party has 50% ownership interest. The purpose of the arrangement is for X, Y, Z. Of course, a joint venture or a joint arrangement is set up for a purpose. The purpose is as follows. To manufacture parts for ABC and CD is own manufacturing processes. The arrangement ensures that the two parties operate the facilities that produces the parts to their specification. What we just need essentially is that joint and separate vehicle XYZ is separate on its own because it has its own assets, liabilities, and it carries its own expenses. It can also um, you know, get its own income. Now, the other part of the question, the legal form. Mm, there you are. Legal form of XYZ, to which the activities are conducted, initially suggests that the assets and liabilities held in XYZ are the assets and liability of XYZ. They are the assets and liability, not the asset and liability of ABC. Not the asset and liability of CDE. So XYZ has its own asset and liability. So that makes it separate. And the contract also specifies, does not specify that ABC have rights to the asset and obligations for the liability. So clearly, this makes it a joint venture, not operation, joint venture. It calls that a separate vehicle. And again, because the legal form cements this fact. And in addition, the contract, the terms of the contract does not say the right ABC, ABC and CD have rights to the assets and obligations. Because if that contract agreement had said that, then it's going to be a joint operation. So what's the financial arrangement like? A joint venturer, what would a joint venturer do? So, what he would do is he will equity account for his own interest in the net asset of that separate vehicle. 
they will equity account in accordance with the International Accounting Standard 28 titled Investment in Associates, unless that entity, that joint venture is exempted from applying equity accounting method. Let me throw a bit of more light here. What is the equity accounting method? I have interest in an entity, ownership interest in an entity, because it's a joint venture. So what the standard asked me to do is, I will take my portion, if I have 40% interest in that entity now, I'll take 40% of the net assets of that separate vehicle. I will also take 40% of the profit of that separate vehicle, if any. So that is what we call equity accounting method. Then I can now go and add it to my own assets and liabilities, my own you know, statement of profit or loss in trying to prepare a consolidated financial statement. So in subsequent lessons, we will understand equity accounting method very, very well. So I move on to the other one. A party that participates in but does not have joint control. You participate in but you don't have joint control. You are required by FRS 11 to treat your interest in joint arrangement strictly in accordance with IFRS 9, Part 2 financial instrument. Unless you have significant influence in that case, then you are now asked to treat it in accordance with IES 28. Significant influence is that influence that other things bring equal. When your ownership interest falls between 20 and 50% in another entity. Of course, there may be some other factors, but quantitatively we can determine if your ownership interest falls between 20 and 50%. I hope you're following this. So now let's now look at what happens when you have joint operation. A joint operator would take the asset that he has contributed eh, to that entity, including his own share of any asset held jointly. So if there is any asset held jointly by the parties involved with the joint arrangement, they will also take his own share. And the same will also be done for liabilities. If you take your, the liabilities that you have incurred separately, and you also take your own share of liabilities that you have incurred jointly. And similar things will have to be done for revenue as well as expenses. You can see it's revenue from the sale of the share of the output arising from joint operation. So if the joint arrangement is such that output will be shared, whatever money you make from the sale of that output becomes yours. So, or if the output will be sold together such that members, by virtue of the terms and conditions of the contract, will now have to share that revenue, then you take your own share and add it to the ones that um, you already have. They also do the same for expenses. This is how IFRS 11 has asked us to treat joint operation. IFRS 11 joint on a um, vital joint arrangement. Please, I don't want us to mix it up. If it's a joint venture, the equity account for it in accordance with IS 28. But if it's not, then and the joint and the joint arrangement is a joint operation where you treat it as spread out on this page. So summary and conclusion. Say you agree that we said in the course of the lesson that a joint arrangement usually involves more than two parties, and the two parties must have joint control. So and it's of two types: joint operation and joint venture. These joint arrangements of two types, joint operation and joint venture. In trying to identify a joint venture or joint venture, uh, joint operation, a subset of joint arrangement, you have to identify whether there is a separate vehicle. Because the centrality of separate vehicle to the ability to be able to identify, you know, the classes, the types of joint arrangement that we have is very, very crucial. You can't just get it wrong. If you mix it up, then at the end, 
if a joint arrangement is supposed to be classified as a joint operation and in Herod you classify it as a joint venture, then the whole accounting system that you have to set up for this will definitely get crumbled. So the auditor will ask for your neck. I'm just a shock for that. And in trying to establish this judgment involved, judgment in terms of number one, you have to look at the legal form. Number two, you have to look at the terms and conditions of the contract and the other, other relevant facts and circumstances. And if you have, you recall that we said if the arrangement is a joint operation, what would you do? You take your interest in the joint, in the assets separately, interest in uh, liabilities separately, interest in expenses separately, and interest in what? And in income separately, unlike joint venture that you only take your interest in the net asset of the separate vehicle. This is where we're going to bring this lesson to an end. I hope you've had a refreshing time. For me, I've enjoyed myself. So I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you very much for watching and listening.